All right, you guys. I'm on Khan Academy now. I'm learning about CSS. I mean, this could help you go to Khan Academy and see what they're teaching over there because learning from different places is really valuable and very helpful. You know? All right, so this is a video. I'm probably going to pause it and then I'll come back when it, it has a challenge for me to do. All right, I'm back, you guys. So it says, this is a challenge, a classy gallery. This looks like free code camp. Why are they always using cats? Why can't they use dogs? Anyway, this web page has three images in the body, but there are no styles yet. We've defined a few CSS rules with class selectors at the top. Some of the rules change the size of the image and others change the border. Your challenge is to add two class names to each image so that the sizes and borders vary from each other. Mix and match. Try a few out. <sighs> All right, you guys. <sighs> so we're gonna add two class names to each image. All right, let's get it going. So here we got image. No, here are the images here. All right, so let's do class equals cat. That's not a cat. What is this? A wolf? Let's just add snow in there. Hmm, did you make up a new CSS class? You should just use the ones that were in the style tag to begin with. You can click start over if you deleted them. Oh, they've already created these class names for us. Let's go look. Um, I don't see no class names. Oh, image small, image medium. Why I got all these class names? My goodness. Image small. Okay. And then image. And then let's see, silver frame. Okay, so we did it there. So then we gonna go and do image medium. Okay, let's see what that did. Thanks. And then we're gonna go ahead and do, I don't know, black frame. There we go. All right, so then we're gonna go ahead and do image. Let's do image medium again. What in the heck happened there? I don't know what happened. Whoa. Y'all, this thing is messing up. Image, medium. And then I think I'll do a uh, gold frame. I haven't done that yet. All right, I did it.
Next challenge, you guys. So this is another video. I'll come back after the video, you guys, and do the challenge with you. All right, challenge classes of elements. So this web page describes one classification of elements in the periodic tables, metals, non-metals, semi-metals. It uses CSS rules with class selectors to color those words, both in the top paragraph and in the headings. Using what you learned in the last video, style the headings so that their background is the same color as their text. When then change the text color so to white so that you can read it. For this step, start by styling the headings with the metal class. Hmm. Using what you learned in the last video, style the headings so that their background is the same color as their text. Hmm. All right. So metal. Oh, this one's tricky. I get what they're trying to do here. Metal, we want this to be. Red. So the color is red. So let's see. Metals. I kind of don't get it, y'all. Using what you learned in the last video, style the heading so that their background is the same color as their text. I mean... Then change the text color to white. Oh, okay. I'm getting confused because I'm looking over here, but I don't need to stop it because that's not what we're doing here. <sighs> Style the heading so that their background is the same color as their text. I mean, I would think you would go like this, right? It looks like you've added properties to the existing rules. That's not what we want. I knew it. Because those rules aren't specific enough. You need to add three new rules that more specifically do what the steps say. Style the heading so that their background is the same color as their text. I'm stumped. Hold on, y'all. I'll be back. Okay, y'all. I figured it out. Let's remove this. So based on what we learned in the last video, we've seen that we can um, basically um, put a class and an element together in there. So let's do H2 dot metal and then change it up. Now we can style it. We're gonna go background color, red, and then color, white. Okay, I mean, we're gonna do the same thing then for the other one. So that's metal, H2 non-metal. So we're just going to go background color, 
blue. And then color, white. All right, and then for this last one, this is H2 semi-metal. So we'll do that one. Color is that down there? Purple? Yeah. Um, background color purple and then color. All right, so now we got all of them. That man is down there saying, good job. So we did it. Yay. All right, this might be a video. And if it is, I'll be back afterwards. I don't want to play Khan Academy's videos. That's not my content, really. So hold on, I'll be back. All right, you guys, here's the challenge. These Khan Academy little challenges ain't no joke. I mean, you would think you can finish them in five minutes, but you can't. All right. This web page describes Genghis Khan, an emperor who had many descendants and includes a table with just a few of the emperors that descended, that descended from him and a rule that targets only the element that have the emperor class and are in the table. The rule should change the background color of all the tables cells. Okay. Mm, I'm gonna have to read that again, but let's look at the hint. It's giving background color. So this web page, add a rule that targets only the elements that have emperor class. All right, let's find it. Let's find it. Emperor class. P has the emperor class. T D. T D T D. Only that targets only the elements that have the emperor class and are in the table. The rules should change the background color of those table cells. All right, so. This is the table. Um, if it's not at the table, we don't need it to change. So this is pretty easy. This has the class emperor, but it's in a paragraph. We don't want this one. We want to be changing only these. So this is pretty easy because this has, this is inside of the T body, TR, TD. Emperor. So I think that's what our thing should be, you guys. I think it should be T body. Let's go up here. T body. Um, TR. Why is it red? T R T D dot emperor. Um, it looks like you've selected all TDs with the emperor class. That works, but we want to select any element that has the class name of emperor and is inside a table tag. How could you do that with a descendant selector? They're trying to say that my thing ain't working. Um, with a descendant selector. I thought I was using a descendant selector. Because I'm using T body space, TR space. Okay, how about we go like this? Is that good?
Hmm. Oh, I see. They're kind of telling me not to use this whole thing, but just use the descendant situation. Okay, I think I would do that by going table, T body. And Emperor. Let's try it. Table. Key body. Your rule is a little more specific than we were looking for. We don't care if the element is also inside the tea body. We only care if it's inside a table. Goodness gracious. Well, if it's inside a table, then table and then TV then. They're not feeling me, y'all. Table TR. Can you change what tag the selector is looking inside? I mean, at this point, I don't know what they want from me. I mean, is that is that what you want? I guess not. You know, you haven't given it to me. Tea body. Your rule is a little bit more specific. Well, damn it, how about this? Just table and emperor. Okay, that's the answer, y'all. Table, emperor. Now add another rule that targets only the elements that have the class name rain. Oh, that's easy. And in the table, like in the first step, the rules should change the background color of those table cells. Pick a different color than you picked on the other one. So this one is gonna be easy, y'all. This is gonna be table rain. And I want y'all to see it because, as you can see, they want you to choose the element that's really the parent, right? And then here's rain down here. It's inside all that stuff, but they don't care. Like I was being like too specific for them, so. All right, all steps complete. All right, you guys, we finally finished that, dang. I'll be back with another one. I feel like it's another video in the next one. Not trying to copy any of Khan Academy's voice saying anything with the copyright situation. So I'll be back. Okay, you guys, here's the challenge. This is a web page about animal group names with a few heading and images as examples. I am so sleepy, y'all. I cannot wait to go to bed. All right, there are already two CSS rules to style the H1s. One with a pseudo 
pseudo selector and one without. Add another selector to each of the rules so that they also style H2s. This is pretty simple, okay? Um, what do they want us to do? Add another selector to each of the rules so that they also style. So all we have to do, right, is put a comma with what we just learned. Uh-oh. Each of them? <laughs> okay. Um, let me see here. Remember when you're grouping selectors with hover, make sure that you put hover after each selector that you group. Got it. Very good um, hint or whatever that was. I got it right, everybody. I got it right. All right, here's another video. So we're gonna pause it and I'll be back. All right, you guys. So we just watched a video about specificity um, and the rules about that. So let's do this last challenge and we will be finished with, I think the whole thing. I'm not sure though. The table below lists selectors and types of selectors. First sort the list selectors from the most specific to the least specific, then each type to a selector. All right, so selector button is, let's see, selectors from the most specific. Um, gallery is an ID that is good. That's the most specific. Button is a class. So that is the element is the last one. So this is a class, I'm sorry, nope. This is an ID selector with the number sign. This is a class selector, that's the second in line. And then the button has nothing, that's the element selector. Yeah. All right, we got that right. Next, order these rules according to their specificity from least specific to most specific. So this is gonna be one. And this is gonna be two. Mm -hmm. Order these rules according to their specificity from least specific to most specific. So we know that the element is always going to be first, you guys. And class most likely will be second. And ID is always going to be last. ID is 100 points. So people rarely use IDs, I heard. <clears throat> given the CSS, what will the border of the image, given the CSS, what will be the border of the image? Even the CSS. Okay, the border of the image is one pixel solid CCC. Uh oh. We've got it over here though, too, though. I don't get it. This is another image. Is it two answers? Oh, they're trying to say which one is going to work because they're specific. Um, so B is going to work because it's the last one on the page. The last one gets it because they're the same specificity. There's nothing special about it. They're just both elements. And so um, B is the last one and it gets to win. All right, you guys. Looks like we're finished. I can upload this video and go to bed. 
Um, I hope you guys have a great night. Um, yeah, let me see. I might upload this. Let me look at this video real quick. Hold on. All right. Yeah, you guys, she's talking about inline um, styling, which is not, is very frowned upon. Um, so, yeah. All right. So, good night, you guys. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.